Welcome to the Hashtag R6 Prepares Podcast. I'm Bill Bischoff, FEMA Region 6 Community Preparedness Officer, and we're going to be talking about community preparedness matters that affect Region 6 states and tribal nations, Arkansas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, New Mexico, Texas, and the tribal nations therein. We hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to the Hashtag R6 Prepares Community Preparedness Podcast, and this time we are overjoyed to have Roxy Beal with us. Roxy has been our preparedness partner from Oklahoma Homeland Security and Emergency Management now for several years and has seen a lot of changes in the time that she's been there to include youth preparedness camps, a youth preparedness council, great partnerships with our tribal partners, and more and more and more. So we just want to thank you, Roxy, for joining us today. How are you? Good. How are you, Bill? Thus far, thus good. Can you tell us uh, how long you've been at Oklahoma Homeland Security? It seems like just uh, it seems like just yesterday that I showed up in Oklahoma City to talk to a skeptical Roxy Bill uh, about how we were going to work together, and I walked in with a uh, uh, a, a big uh, legal pad filled with things that I wanted uh, and ready to ask you what you wanted and see what we could work out. And now on the other end of things, as, as I understand that you're going to be moving on in about another month or so, uh, I come back with the legal pad for this podcast filled with things that I've uh, seen you do and, 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 you know, changes that have come to Oklahoma uh, to include youth preparedness camps and youth preparedness council uh, and, and strategic tribal partnerships that weren't there before you got there. So, when did you, it, it seems like we've been working together for years, but when did you actually get there? Um, well, I started with the Office of Homeland Security probably in November of 2014, but I think you and I met for the community preparedness stuff in 15. So, that's been six years. Well, and, and when, when we started working together, I, I, I found that you were just like all of us, that uh, when when we start talking about youth preparedness or CERT or anything in particular, um, it, it, like your state partners from Arkansas, Louisiana, it's really not your job. I, I mean, uh, what what was your job when you when you started? Um, well, so I inherited the community preparedness piece, so. Pretty much what I was aware of was we did do, we did coordinate CERT training. So I got familiar with what CERT was and we did a couple of community outreach um, presentations and things like that. But even so, even from what my previous partner did before I took over, there were still, there was still a lot to learn. So I remember talking to you in the beginning, like, I don't even know where to start. And so the community preparedness working group. Um, that you had put together was very helpful, being able to bounce things off of other people, find out what was working for others. And again, I, without your partnership there, I don't know that I ever would have got off the ground. So. Well, thank you for that. And I would say uh, shout out to our partners because you and I have both um, thrived off of the Community Preparedness Working Group. I, I, I often talk to my partners in other regions and I say, man, Roxy Bill talks to Amanda Smith and Amanda Smith talks to Gary Reagan. And in other words, it's Oklahoma talks to Louisiana. Louisiana talks to Arkansas, Texas, uh, Oklahoma, you know, New Mexico. Everyone uh, works across the borders to get the best thing they can in, inside their states. Um, and I, I've seen it. I've, seen you thrive during that and and at the beginning you were asking uh, a lot of questions and now uh, it, it seems like every other day I'm talking to somebody who sought your counsel uh, and every podcast we do your name comes up uh, uh, the last one we did was uh, James O'Claire uh, of the Oto Missouri and he, he talked about uh, what a great support you had uh, provided from Oklahoma Homeland Security over the years to uh, support he and his endeavors with youth preparedness and CERT. Um, so talk to me for a minute about how you got started with the Oklahoma Youth Preparedness Council. 
Okay. Uh, first, I want to say I'm humbled by the fact that I'm lumped in with all these great community partners because, honestly, I, I wouldn't have been able to succeed in any of those without them reaching out to me first. So, um, definitely, you know, the James Declares and, you know, Dempsey Crafts, those folks out there that reached out to me first and said, hey, we need help with this. And the only part I played was really by supporting them and whatever they needed to have done, which... You know, you taught me by example is how, how we lead this thing. So, um, and that's exactly how it happened with the youth preparedness. I think he reached out to me and said, Hey, we got some kids coming to this camp. You have some youth you want to send. And I didn't have a clue. I mean, I didn't know youth at that point that I could get to participate, but I did have partners like James LeClaire and, you know, Dempsey who and other communities that were already working with youth. So I just sent out the email saying, Hey, anyone has some youth that want to go to this camp, I'll help support however I can. And you know, that's how James LeClaire's group came the first time, which you know, the rest is history there. All right. They went on to become the first state or first tribal youth preparedness camp uh, or both camp and council in the nation. So yes. Yeah. Right. And, and then you moved on along. I, I remember that you had a number of folks that you would bring them to the Region 6 Youth Preparedness Calls. And then as time went by, y'all were able to start your own Youth Preparedness uh, Council. Uh, what what does that do for a state? What does that do for the local areas? And, I, and trust that I understand we've all suffered in the last year and a half or so uh, now uh, COVID and been not being able to get together and, and uh, uh, a lot of our uh, meetings that we would normally have because school has been online. It's been tough to get folks uh, um, to the, to the conference calls or zoom meetings, but in normal times, what does, uh, what does it mean to the community to have a state or a local youth preparedness uh, council? Um, well, I'm going to back up just a little bit because I think the importance for those relationships that were built during um, during the camps um, because I know we had a loss of high school that before my time they actually had attended one of the, the Texas youth camps there and had come back excited and then you know as things do they kind of you know age out of the system or whatever um, before things can actually get going and so between the Owasso kids that had already had a taste of it and then the Oto, Missouri kids that had a taste of it, um, we also had partnerships, emergency management partners here in Oklahoma that had been trying to get youth programs going for years, had been talking about youth preparedness and it just it never really took off. So by connecting those EM partners with the youth that did go to camp, then we were able to get the Oakland, Missouri kids, um, you know, trained up as trainers, thanks to David Grizzle and Norman. Um, so, and, you know, also Shane and Chatwin's group there in Owasso were able to get them some extra training so they could help with, with their classes in their camp. And again, Dempsey Craft, Choctaw Nation group, um, their, their, their group, they've actually started the Atoka High School, um, curriculum there, the cert curriculum in their school. So it just kind of snowballs. Once you connect those partners, they 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 make it happen. So so that's what happened is David Grizzle and another partner, who did I send that year? Um, I know Deb Wagner had gone. So I, I just picked people that I knew were active and, you know, were passionate about preparedness and cert and things like that. And I asked them to represent us on the the working group. Um, and they came back excited after witnessing the Texas camp there too. And they're like, we can do this in Oklahoma. And so that, that, yeah, without them coming back with that passion and that excitement, I wouldn't have known where to start, but they came back and we can do this. I'm like, okay, let's do this. So, <laughs> well, and, and let's talk about that because I was fortunate enough to, to join you and, uh, there in Tahlequah for your, uh, first big, uh, youth preparedness camp. Um, uh, the first one that you, you and Oklahoma Homeland Security and, and, uh, your, your partners there hosted. Uh, so how did that come to be? Because that's a tough one. 
we, we still have partners everywhere that are having trouble getting started on a youth preparedness camp and, and people have done it different ways. And this one was, uh, again, one of the more successful, if not the most successful camps. And I, it's tough to call anything the most successful camp because you get, I'm lucky I get to see uh, a bunch of these things here in Region 6 and they all have a different flavor. Yours for sure had a different flavor in the way it was put together and, and who you had running it. So if you will, tell me how that came to be. Um, I wish I could give you like a list of best practices to say this is how you run a great camp, but I'm just going to say we lucked out because we just had some great partners and we had a lot of great volunteers in emergency management and in preparedness. We were able to... Um, take what Texas was doing and modify it to what might work for us. We had a lot of great people that were on the planning committee that just threw out some great ideas. We had um, higher education partners, you know, Andy Smith from Northeastern State University and Jackie Wright from Rose State College. And so they were already dealing with the, the younger folks and kind of knew what worked for camps and what, what didn't. Um, so it was really just a perfect storm of wonderful partners coming together. We were able to get the word out to some great groups. So we had Muskogee's JROTC group that came. Um, we had Shannon Chatwin's Owasso group that came. And then, you know, we just had just some great participation and it just, it just flowed really nicely. I, I can't give you a, this is what you should do. Um, I think. It was listening to the partners, what they wanted, what they'd seen work, what they wanted to try, and everyone kind of thinking outside the box and everyone just putting in an 120%, you know, and it, it just worked. I think one of the fascinating things to me was you kind of assembled a dream team of folks from across the state who were stalwarts in CERT. Um, and called upon them to be part of the planning committee and then eventually to staff the camp. So you had, uh, as, as I've, um, uh, the years, community preparedness can be a, can be a tough deal because people's heart and soul go into their programs. And when you get, uh, a group like you had, you had the all stars, but they don't always see things the same way. So you get great performance, but at the end of the day, I remember part of it was you had to be running the show and eventually go, well, this has to go this way, and this has to go that way, and that's the way it's got to be, uh, which I, I know you to be a very humble uh, person who does not care to jump up and go, this is good, the, the buck stops here, and this is the way it's going to be, but it, it, it seemed like you're doing that made things uh, that much better. I mean, it, it just seemed like that. you had a great team assembled and you ran with them uh, in, in such an excellent uh, uh, fashion. So, well, thank you. I appreciate that. I um, again, I don't feel I can take credit because I kind of did what um, has been my mantra to do: play with those who want to play. And so, those who came to the table weren't people that I recruited. They were people that volunteered and said, "Hey, I'm passionate about this. I want to do this." And I'm like, sure, let's go. You know, it's like getting together. And I do think I, I communicate well and try to be compassionate towards people. So that helps me to stand up and be able to bridge those communication gaps when, you know, there's a little too much tension because I want to go this way, but I want to go this way kind of thing. But so that was helpful. But the dream team, I can't take credit for. They're just awesome volunteers that came together. But you went across the state, so that was part of your community preparedness network for the state of Oklahoma, if, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and just yeah, uh, that's true. Y'all y'all work together so well, and and it, I, so during the camp, can can you go over a few of the sections of what was taught there, and and what it you know what the impact may be going forward? Um, so we basically did the cert curriculum um, as it as it comes out of FEMA. Um, we did add a couple of extra things like Stop the Bleed and CPR because we had instructors that were trained in that and were interested in bringing that to the students. We also had some hand operators that were excited to tell those students about um, 
ham radio operations and things like that. So uh, we also did what Texas is used as far as the leadership training for the community um, leadership training. We incorporated that as well. Um, I think that was pretty much the, the basic of the curriculum. It, it was a full week, but we got really good feedback from all the students. They were really excited about learning it all and having all the hands-on um, activities to do so. And there were a couple of folks, uh, parents that, that were there who saw their children kind of go from the kind that sit quietly in a room playing with their computer to actually embracing partnership and working with others for the first time. And I just remember them being almost in, in tears of joy about it. And, and I, it, it reminded me why we love doing what we do because that, 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 that just tells you you're seeing some personal gain immediately. But also, I, I believe you saw maybe some things change afterwards. Um, in, uh, didn't you hear back from a couple of high schools or groups form uh, either preparedness groups, preparedness groups or councils or anything like that? Yes, the group from El Lasso, um has gone back and they pretty much had a search camp, like school camp. Oh, sorry, school club, a uh, cert school club that they, they were involved in. So they just kind of kept the training going with the group of students they had and added more students and added more. And then a couple of them also helped um, as we formed the, the Oklahoma Youth Preparedness Council. Right. So talk to me for a moment about tribal partnerships. Um, I remember very quickly noticing that you were, it was very important to us at FEMA Region 6 to, to be working with our tribal partners. And I would go to the intertribal emergency management coalition summits. And, uh, and I would feel like I was doing a, a fairly good job until I'd look over and see you shaking hand after hand at the, uh, at the Oklahoma Homeland Security booth. And I, so just tell me what you did and, and what those mean to you. Well, actually, my the tribal partnerships actually started with the Oklahoma Missouri tribe as well. So the um, Gary Burgess, who was the mom of the two kids that went the first year, um, so she became like a partner when after she came back from after her kids came back from the camp, and I saw that she was on the Item C um, committee, and. I asked how to get invited to the item C summit and she was able to get me invited. And after that, it's like you said, those partnerships, just getting to know people. But, um, you know, once you have a, a foot in the door with the tribes, it, it's easy to get to know them and, you know, it's easy to build relationships with them. Once you get in, you just have to have the right avenue to get in. And, and and to maintain that trust and understanding and, and absolutely, I mean, I, yeah. So yeah. I I watched a how to build tri tribal partnerships um, webinar one time that I think Rachel Nutter put on, and Rachel um, and I was surprised at all the things that she was talking about were about you know, respecting and the differences and just you know, being honest, and I'm like, yeah, I mean, that's how you want to treat a human being, right? I mean, it's just about being you know, upfront and being honest and being true to your word and, you know, treating people well. I, I think we we both have sat through millions of trainings that tell us, uh, you know, what not to be, and and sometimes I, I think that the key is making sure whoever's in charge finds the right people to do the right job, and Exactly. That that was done in the in the case of Kim Ed Carter and, and you. Uh, well, I just think you know, um, you know, respecting differences and just you know not going like you talked about not going in with a cookie cutter program and telling people this is how you need to do it. You know, it's like keeping people where they are and realize you know finding out what their needs are and working within that. You know, what can I do to support you? with your goals, you know, not that I'm going to come in and change this about your program or that I'm going to come in and tell you how to do this or that. No one wants to hear that, you know. No one wants to work with someone who's going to come in and do that. 
Which is one of the reasons I was so skeptical of you at first when you walked in the door saying, no, I don't know that we want to do it your way. Which thankfully you weren't that way. You were very open and very supportive of how can we help you. So uh, I, you, you've been page, the model that I've taken through down. Well, well, thank you. I had I had the one page for me that was filled up with uh, hopefuls and and uh, maybes, and then I had an open page uh, for for you what you wanted and and how we were going to do things uh, because that was the more important page. And now at the end of the game. Uh, I wouldn't say the end of the game, but uh, as your game at Oklahoma Homeland Security and Emergency Management was close to the end, that page has grown into so many pages of, of wonderful things. Uh, you know, all, all these all these camps, councils, uh, uh, the relationships. I believe what you put together uh, through embracing partnership with everyone that you can is going to leave a mark. Uh, that is going to be difficult to erase. So I, I would ask that you uh, share your philosophy, and I think you already kind of have, but if you can just say it one more time for me, uh, for anybody that comes behind you, um, when they look at Oklahoma um, and, and look for the path forward, what do you think would be the best path for them? I mean, just because you look at it, you walked into a job, somebody had done it differently before you got there. Uh, and, and so you you were kind of like I'm Roxy, and this is the way I've got to go. Your suggestion be? Um, well, the number one thing I tell people, which is something that you drove home to me early on, was to build the relationship. It's like people are like those patterns in a quilt; you stitch them together, right? I remember you saying that to me early on, and that just really made an impact on me. And it's true that building those relationships. Um, it puts something in place so that no matter what the needs are, you can find resources to meet those needs. You may not be able to, but you may be able to connect them to someone else who can. And taking, you know, your example there, that's what I've been able to do in Oklahoma, is just building those relationships and connecting them to resources they need. And again, playing with those who want to play. Wing it when you can. I mean, sometimes it's not about it being perfect. It's about you know, starting it. And once you start it, you know, sometimes it takes off on its own, which is what a lot of stuff has done in Oklahoma. But that journey, yes. Yeah, I, I think that's the key. It's right. anything else. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at needing to knock off of, uh, the pounds again, and I go, okay, all you got, all you got to do is start with that first half a pound, and you can, you can go. It's, uh, it's taking that first step. So, uh, I, I can't tell you how thrilled I've been to work with you over, over the years. You have been just a fantastic partner. I've learned so much from you. Um, everything that you've done has been through your partners there in Oklahoma, and it's made them bigger, stronger, smarter. You, you, you leave this place on your journey bigger, stronger, smarter, and, and leaving us uh, in, in a much better place than, than when you got there. Uh, so I can't thank you enough, Roxy, for the great done, the great partner that you've been. And I just wish you the best as you move forward. I, I know your your next uh, uh, endeavor is going to be in a different state. So I I just can't thank you enough for everything you've done. And I look forward to talking to you a state away, wherever that state is going to be. Thank you. Well, I have to give credit to um, the support that I have through my my office, they've been really wonderful and have allowed me opportunities to step out in ways that I, I may not have been able to. Um, and our office, I know, is really strong into supporting the community. So anything that our office can do to help others um, in our state, we want to do so. Um, so, you know, share the info at okohs.ok.gov for anyone that's wanting to support the Homeland Security. We do mostly... Um, Supporting, you know, the, the terrorism, um, nexus, you know, things that we can support for other agencies around, um, the state. But anyway, thank you. I appreciate you, Bill. Thank you. We'll talk next time. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. That about does it for this episode. We'd like to thank Laura Brown from Arkansas Tech University's Emergency Management Program for her assistance editing 
uh, this podcast. And we'd like you, the listener, to give us a like if you're so inclined and to share us with somebody else that might want to help prepare their community. Until next time, take care of you and yours.